All right, here we are again out in my beloved boulders in Willow Lake in Arizona. And today, on this kind of blustery day, this changeable day, I want to talk about the three ways that we can develop and foster leadership in a time of crisis. As the wind blows and the clouds change, it just reminds me of all the times that I've been on backpack trips or paddling trips and had to make changes because the river was too high or the storms were coming in or somebody in the group got hurt and we had to make changes and that I've discovered that there are ways that we as leadership development professionals can actually use those times to help our participants, our mentees, our students grow and mature and become stronger leaders themselves. But it takes some work on our part. And the first step, the first part of the three, the first thing that I know that I always need to do as a leader, and I'm guessing you do too, is to calm my own emotions. When there's an emergent crisis, when there's a, an injury, when there's something changeable, when we're being given different directions from above and to the side, it's easy to get lost in one's own adrenaline and one's own fight or flight reflex. I know it is for me, and I know also for me, and I'll just be vulnerable in this moment, what I make up in times of crisis is that I might not be able to rise to the moment. I might not have the energy, the intelligence, the, the foresight, the skill to deal in this new environment, and that makes me tend to want to protect myself and that reduces my ability to think and be creative. It also reduces my ability to reach out and be collaborative and inclusive. So the first thing that I have to do as a leader and I think that all of us need to do as leadership development folks is calm our own fears, get help around that, get help from colleagues, get help from, from other people. I get help from being out here. So calm those emotions so that you can be creative and inclusive. The second thing that we can do to promote leadership development in the time of crisis is to pull aside the curtain on our own thinking, pull aside the curtain in our own uh, ways of approaching things so that our participants, our students, our mentees can learn from our experience in the moment. If we only do student leadership development, if we only do mentoring when things are easy, our next generation of leaders are only gonna see easy leadership. It's a wonderful opportunity right now in this time of COVID and this time of disruption to model, even muddle, even muddled modeling through crisis leadership so that this new generation of leaders, when they encounter more crises going forward, they will have seen an example of what can happen and what can go great in a time of crisis and in a time of crisis leadership. So pull aside the curtain, explain your thinking, explain your doubts and fears, acknowledge the new reality, acknowledge the emotions that come up for you and possibly for others around this new reality. Yes, we're disappointed. Yes, we're scared. Yes, we're unsure. Let's talk about that. Let's move past it. Another thing we can do in this moment as we pull aside the curtain is redefine what success is and go back to the basics, right? We thought success was that student retreat. We thought success was that community uh, service project. But we can redefine success as, okay, we're not gonna be able to do that, but we are gonna together create more leadership opportunities and develop and learn, right? That needs to be the new kind of success that's not as attached to specific outcomes, but is much more open with much more potential. So redefine success for everybody. Pull aside that curtain, show them how you're redefining that success so that they have some uh, something to aim for that's not necessarily a concrete thing, but is still that highly desired development and learning and togetherness. And the third part of modeling leadership in time of crisis is to make a plan that engages your stakeholders, that engages your students and your participants. Now the amount of engagement that's available, that's appropriate, depends on kind of the maturity and capacity of your group. And there may be some outside factors involved in that as well. But generally you can at least be really clear and transparent about your own planning. You can uh, articulate your own planning process and your own execution process in front of your participants so they see and hear and experience what you're doing, the pros and cons, how you're making decisions. That's very valuable for them to see and hear. You can also engage your group more fully by actually having them participate in the planning process. 
get feedback, get ideas, have a brainstorming session. They know the new success that you're aiming for. They know how you've defined it. So ideas that work in that direction, if they come from the group, are going to strengthen their ability to lead in crisis in the future. And then at the highest level of engagement, you may even be able to turn over the planning process almost fully to them. You guys, we're not going to be able to do that student retreat. We're not going to be able to do that, that uh, community project that we thought we were going to do. It's up to you now to come up with an alternative that meets our needs for success, learning, development, togetherness, and growth. I trust you guys. You're a mature group. I'm really curious what you come up with, and I'm here to, to back you up. You know, there's so much energy and power in our students and our mentees and our participants to l unleash that in this time of crisis is part of really brave student leadership development. And I encourage folks to at least consider turning over the process to your team, to your group, to your stakeholders. So those are the three thoughts, three lessons that I have for today about acknowledging and controlling our own emotions as leaders, pulling aside the curtains so that our stakeholders can see and understand how we're approaching a crisis, and then finding the right level of engagement uh, moving forward and creating something new that will meet those needs for learning and development together and success. Thanks so much for being out here today. The sun has come out now. It's shining on my face. Take care.